S3 provides a way to limit public access to files hosted on your bucket based on time. For example, if you have an image hosted on S3, you can generate a signed URL that will be unique for each user. And this user will be able to access this file only for the amount of time that you allow. And this gives you a lot of control. Each image can be shared only with the users that are supposed to access this image and only for the amount of time that you would like them to. So if you give such a URL to a user, they can download the image if they want to, but they won't be able to access it for longer than they supposed to. In this video, we'll create a new bucket. We'll see how to generate such signed URLs and how they work. Let's get started by creating our first bucket. We'll make our bucket completely private because if our bucket was public, that would kind of defeat the purpose of the signed URLs because anybody could access all of the files that we have there. But if we'll make all of our files private, we'll be able to allow access to our files only to those users that we give out our signed URLs to. Now that our bucket was created, let's add some files to it. Let's find some random images from Unsplash. Let's download this image to a local file. And let's add another image. Now let's upload these two images to our bucket. Now that our files were uploaded, we can see that for now we can't access them directly. This is the file URL, but it is not available publicly. However, we'll be able to generate a signed URL. So we'll append some sort of a signature to the end of this URL. And then whoever has the signed URL will be able to access this image for the amount of time that we allow. But if anyone finds this image by itself without the signature, they just won't be able to access it. One more thing we need to do is to go to IAM and create a new user that will create the signature for our URLs. The reason we need to create a dedicated user is because the access key ID of this user will be exposed in our signature. And while the password won't be exposed, I still always prefer to create a dedicated user for this use case and not reuse a user that has more permissions than it needs to. So we'll open the users and then add user. We'll create a user with a programmatic access type. And let's give this user full access to S3. Of course, it would be better to give it only the specific permissions that we need to generate the signature. But for simplicity, we'll just use this policy. Now that our user was created, we'll copy the access ID and the secret access key and store them in our code. This is a local file that we're going to use to generate the signature. So far, I've imported the AWS SDK and I created variables for the bucket name, access key ID, and secret access key. Then I updated the configuration of AWS to use these keys. Now let's go back to our bucket and copy the bucket name to our file. Now we're ready to write the code that will generate the signed URL for us. By the way, this channel is all about short and practical videos teaching how to build backends using AWS. AWS is powerful, flexible, and cheap, but not always the easiest to figure out. And the documentation can be overwhelming. So the goal of this channel is to simplify everything in bite-sized videos. If that's something that interests you, please make sure to subscribe because a lot of videos about AWS are coming soon. First, I'll create a function that will call to generate the URL. And we'll immediately also call our function. We also need to initiate S3. We're going to generate the URL by calling the get sign URL promise function. First, we need to let it know which command we want to generate the signature for. So the command we need is get object. Then we need to pass it a few attributes. First of all is the bucket which is going to be our bucket name, then the key, which is the name of the file. For us, it will be image one. And then we need to let it know when will our signature expire. 
So let's say we want our sign URL to only be valid for one minute. So we'll set this expires attribute to 60 seconds. Now let's try to run this code and get our sign URL. So this is the sign URL that was generated for us. First, let's try to open it in a browser and see if it works. As you can see, we can open and get access to the image that we uploaded earlier. If we'll try to open only the image and access it directly, we won't be able to because this file is not publicly accessible. So only the users that will have the full sign URL will be able to access this file and only for one minute as we defined. After one minute passes, we will no longer be able to open it. So one thing to pay attention to is that we have the AWS access key ID in the URL. And this is the key ID that we define in our file. And this is the key ID of the user that we created using IAM. So this access key ID is exposed and that's fine as long as we don't expose the secret access key. And as you can see, it doesn't appear in our URL. What we do have here is the expiration and the signature. However, we can't change this expiration because if someone will try to play around with it and change it to a later date, it just won't work because it won't match the signature. So let's see if a minute already passed. And as you can see, after the minute passes, this URL is no longer available. And it's not like we can change the expiration date and set it to a later date. It just won't work because the signature won't match and this URL is no longer usable. So the user that had this URL can no longer access this image. If they'll try to remove the signature, it just won't work. If they'll try to update the expiration date, it will also won't work. And since they don't have access to a different signature, they no longer have access to this file. You might be wondering at this point, why did we have to specify get object as the command that we want to create a signature for? The reason is because we can also change it to put object. If we'll do that, we'll be able to generate a URL that will work for 60 seconds and this URL will allow us to upload an image to S3. Let's change the name of the key to uploaded image. Let's try to generate the URL. Now for the next 60 seconds, we can use this URL to upload an image to S3 and it will be named uploaded image PNG. So I'm going to try to upload this image to our bucket. Now let's go back to our bucket and see if the image was uploaded. So our image was uploaded to our bucket without any authentication. Let us upload this image using this temporary signed URL. However, if we try to do the same without the signature, just by specifying the bucket, it wouldn't work. Also now we can no longer use this generated URL because 60 seconds passed and it no longer works as well. So the get signed URL promise lets us either read a file or upload the file and specify how much time do we have to use these actions. Something worth pointing out is that of course this code cannot be on the client because we cannot expose the secret access key. This code will need to be on the server side and it will generate the URLs for us, either the same URL that will be given out to all the users and then it will just limit them by the amount of time they have to use it or a different URL for each user. This way we can specify a different amount of time per user or give access to our files only to specific users who have access to these URLs and other users that will try to access the file directly won't be able to do so. If you're interested in uploading files but want more flexibility with it, it's also worth checking out the create pre sign post function. Because this function, unlike the one that we used, allows to provide conditions for the file being uploaded. For example, we can specify what is the maximum size or what is the type of the file that we allow to upload. And any upload that won't match these conditions simply won't work. If you're interested in this function and would like to see a detailed video about how to use it to upload files directly from an HTML form, please let me know in the comments. If you found this video valuable and you learned something from it, I would really appreciate it if you leave it a like so it will reach more people. And if you would like to be notified when I upload more similar videos about AWS, please subscribe to this channel.